I'm Simon. You probably remember me from such features as the TV show American Idol, American Idol from PlayStation 2, and Homer punching me on The Simpsons. Unfortunately, American Idol seems to have lost its audience. For this reason, new auditions will be held during the summer of 2005 for the first episode of American Novel. Now it is my recommendation that you pay extremely close attention to this video so that you don't find yourself humiliated in front of the entire country when I inform you that your novel lacks coherence and you suck. Cause that would suck if you found out that you sucked, now wouldn't it? Yes, I do believe it would. In order to prepare for this competition, you need to know the characteristics of great literature, including my taste and distaste of literature, why literature should be studied, and what one should perceive as the benefits of a literature class. And just as any local instructor should change his or her methods of teaching, how your English instructor should change his or her methods of teaching. First off, I will cover the traits of well-written literature, of course, you would think that a good novel should always incorporate a fair deal of slang. A few hot babes, and a few diabolical leprechaun men dancing around. Stop right there. We need no ghost to come from the graveyard to tell us tale that you'd be dead wrong. Aside from the hot babes plot, and well, diabolical leprechauns are cool, but not vital to a story's success. Anyways, you would succumb to the most devastating humiliation on my next show. Good literature should consist of a coherent plot as seen in the Lord of the Rings series when Frodo strives to deliver the ring to the volcano and destroy it. Personally, I wouldn't like a novel if it didn't have a good plot, and a novel would struggle to even make the shelves without a plot unless it was non-fiction. Secondly, the most notable literature strives to persuade the subconscious mind to nibble at morality is seen in Twain's novel The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, when Huckleberry decides to aid Jim in his escape down the Missouri River. The least successful, a novel needs good character development of the main characters as seen when Victor Frankenstein tells the story of his demise and informs Robert Walton of his lost loved ones in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I find the main fault in character development is the process of defining every character within the first ten pages as seen in most children novels. More developed novels tend to develop each character as they interact with the narrator. Finally, a proper use of literary tactics and sentence structure variation prove vital to a novel's success, as seen in Frankenstein when Shelley allows the voices of other characters to interrupt and alter Victor's highly subjective account of the novel's events in Chapter 7, and when Jim uses southern dialect throughout the novel The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. I especially loved Huck's remark at the end of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Tom Sawyer had taken Aunt Polly's letters addressed to Aunt Sally out of the mail, and Aunt Polly told Aunt Sally about it. After learning of the interception of the letters, Aunt Sally said that she still had the most recent one, when in reality Huggleberry had snatched it away from her before she had got a chance to read it. This was never actually stated, but hinted at when Huckleberry stated, I wanted to offer her two dollars if she hadn't received the letter, but I reckoned maybe it was just as safe not to. Furthermore, Huckleberry Finn had so many hot babes. Mary Jane was so hot! In order to fully understand the construction process of a good novel, one must understand why the study of literature is important and what one should perceive as the benefits of a literature class. The study of literature proves to be one of the most significant steps to understanding the psychological thought process of the norm and learning how to successfully interact among others. Mark Twain didn't instantaneously strike society as a celebrity of the time. He had to review several forms of literature to create his first novel. Gandhi's speeches could not have ever swayed his audience had he not reviewed the forms of literature and incorporated tactics of persuasion from previous documents. Finally, Steven Spielberg could not have attained his rank in scriptwriting had he not reviewed Shakespeare's tragedies. Reviewing literature is obviously significant to one's success, and one should understand that a literature class will allow an individual to openly accept another's beliefs, enable one to interpret the actions of another, and enable one to predict the future actions of that person. Perhaps you don't believe that you are getting all those benefits from your literature class. There are a few guidelines that I'd recommend that you check to be sure that your teacher is following. Every literature class should require that the students read and actively analyze some classic form of literature in class. Every literature class should lightly cover the different elements composing of each novel. However, I don't believe that any literature class should go as far as the characterizing and classifying of each literary tactic, seeing how so many of them are subjective and there are still so many tactics left unclassified. I believe that the tactics are worth mentioning in class, however, there shouldn't be tests over them. Finally, I believe that every literature class should start off with a creative writing project in which a student may choose to write a story of 
over any topic that he or she wishes and then compare it to other forms of literature and expand upon it over the classes. Now remember, in order to spare yourself from the utmost humiliation, you must know the characteristics of great literature including my taste and distaste of literature, why literature should be studied and what one should perceive as the benefits of a literature class, and how your English teacher should teach your class. Finally, don't attend the competition if you suck.